Okay, this video will get a little raunchy, all right? Nothing explicit. I censor the hell out of the naughty pictures. But there may be mention of adult toys and adult stories. If that's not your cup of pee, you've been warned. If it is, you've been hooked. The idea of a land of sexy women was popular in many cultures, including China and Japan. Nothing like wet daydreams to capture the public's imagination. The land of women was mentioned more than 2,000 years ago in China. Over the years, the sexy lore grew. All kinds of theories sprang up stiffly. People said things like, the island women only gave birth to girls, or when men came, they never returned, or the women became pregnant by looking at their reflections in a divine well. The island even showed up in official history books. The history of the Wei Dynasty, written all the way back in 554, tells of a land in the sea northeast of the Korean Peninsula where only women lived. A Chinese encyclopedia had this entry. Ages ago, an expedition stumbled across an island. The women inhabitants stole their ship, trapping the sailors. The men almost starved, but one brave man took back the ship and they all escaped. Some said the women of the island became pregnant by looking at their reflections in a well. Others said they became pregnant by opening their legs to the air, inviting the south wind to come inside. Why so much talk about weird ways to get pregnant? Well, it makes sense. The first thing you'd ask when you hear about this place is, if there are no men, then how do they have kids? And can I help? Another theory said that women became pregnant by bathing in a yellow lake. And if they gave birth to a baby boy, it would die right after age three. Terrible, but it did ease the pressure of having to find birthday gifts. Chinese ideas were like Instagram models. They tended to spread everywhere. The island of women idea reached medieval Japan and became a big hit, especially in the adult industry. Adult artists and red light districts jumped on the opportunity and rode it to their advantage. In Japanese, the island is called Niogogashima. Here's a famous story about the island, told in graphic illustration form. The grown-up stuff is censored, but if any of you degenerates really wants to see them, I put the uncensored video on my Patreon or YouTube membership. Just check out the description box below. Alright, this story is called A Treasure Ship Arrives at the Island of Women. It starts with three men. Our heroes are a craftsman, a playboy, and a doctor. They decide to brave the waves on their way to the island. When they arrive at the land of the rising bun, some women take them to the mistress of the island. She and her ladies conduct a thorough inspection of the men's spears and what impressive spears they are. Now, some of you may be thinking, wow, those are gigantic spears, if you say so. No. Enormous spears were a key feature of Japanese erotic prints. They were required, very important. After the inspection, the mistress gets positively thirsty. Her throat is like the Sahara Desert, and her crotch is like the Amazon rainforest. The inspection must have gone well, because here are two of our heroes enjoying a nice time with two ladies. The woman on the left, wearing the golden hairpin, is the mistress of the island. What a great artist. You can almost hear the sounds of people eating at a ramen restaurant coming from the painting. Here's another 2v2. You can see the mistress again on the left with the golden hairpin. The men are having a grand old time. The guy in front seems to be doing some expert manipulation with his hands on the lady's parts. Oh, look at the mistress having a good time on her throne. His ram looks too big, but don't worry. Her southern gate is of an appropriate size to be comfortably infiltrated. There are six people here. Six. If not for that rug, there would have been flood damage. At the top, two tortoise shell dildos lie unused. Or used, I'm not sure. Tortoise shell dildos were the high-end kind. Unfortunately, fun times don't last forever. Day after day of sex has taken a toll on the men. They're exhausted. This woman on the left is overcome with disappointment over her partner's floppy pet, hiding under his owner, peeking his head out. An old woman on the right is inspecting one man's flute to see what's wrong. Two women try to wake one of our poor, depleted heroes. The other guy is still hard at work, but he's also being drained of energy. Moral of the story, chasing after a life of pleasure will only end in ruin.
The island of women stories took off in Japan's red light districts in the Edo period. No surprise because red light districts like the famous Yoshiwara were pretty much islands of women. They were walled off from the rest of the city. Yoshiwara itself was surrounded by a moat. Writers hyped up the island, made it seem like a heavenly sex realm, a land of pleasure beyond your wettest imagination. In one story, a group of friends set sail on a one-way trip to the island. The main character, Yonosuke, called the island his Piro Land. In Buddhism, the Piro Land was an afterlife for people who were saved, like a Buddhist heaven. The boys brought along an ample amount of supplies to prepare for life on the island. 250 pairs of metal masturbation balls, 600 penal attachments, 2,550 water buffalo horn dildos, 3,500 tin dildos, 800 leather dildos, 200 erotic prints, 900 bales of tissue paper, and a partridge in a pear tree. Essentials for any trip. Artists also had a field day with the island, and not just the X-rated artists. Legends say that Minamoto no Yoshitsune traveled to many strange lands, including an island of women who get knocked up by the wind. The women wanted to chop up the men to make talismans, but Yoshitsune charmed the ladies by playing his flute. He promised to bring back 10,000 men to them, so they let him leave. Here's a drawing of Yoshitsune's arrival. It's full of curved lines to arouse sensual feelings and remind you of feminine things. The curly waves, the sloping island, the round tip of the boat. The three ladies are supposed to be seductive because of their flowing dresses and that erect tree behind them. It's the only rigid, straight thing in the whole painting. This story is called The Lusty Man from Akashi Arrives on the Island of Women. This man hears of Yonosuke's voyage from the earlier story and rushes to find the island himself. He lands on an island where everything is female. There are only female birds and deer, only female pine trees. Even the waves are female, meaning they're low waves, not high ones. Some women take him deeper into the island. The women on this island have another weird way of getting pregnant. They just sleep with a picture of a handsome man beneath their sheets and boom, pregnant. He sees a row of houses where lusty women call for him to come inside their homes. He finally meets the mistress of the island who greets him with a welcoming sex party. It's a pretty sweet life, but he eventually grows homesick and decides to leave. The women say goodbye and give him a box, but tell him never to open it. The man gets home, puts down his luggage, and opens the box. It spews forth a current of white liquid that shrivels his mighty peepee. That'll teach him. This sounds like a parody of the old folk tale of Urashima Taro. I have a video about it if you want to see. Buddhists are well-known haters of fun. So they loved Sex Island because they could tell people how bad it was. In one story, a group of men opened a brothel on the island, with them on the menu. They traveled miles just to give these women a few inches. They served beautiful women day and night, but eventually they felt unfulfilled and tired. Then they died. Only one man stayed alive. He kept going strong, seeing 50 women a day. They said it was like he was made of iron. Now it may seem impossible to fit 50 women in one day, but not really. If my engineering degree has taught me anything, it's that sex should be quick and fast. We're all about efficiency here. But soon the man too grew tired and unfulfilled. Luckily a sage rescued him and said, That's why I sent you to the island of women, so you could learn that clinging to desires will cause great harm. He also said the reason the guy didn't die like the rest was because the bodhisattva Kanon had saved him. She had turned into a wooden dildo and took his place. What a badass goddess. The island of women seems similar to another island from Japanese folklore, Ratsetsukoku, the island of demons. It's also a sex island, and I also have a video about it. The lore for these two islands mixed, making them almost the same place. They were like both halves of the same pair of titties. In Edo period maps of Japan, the island appeared as a place south of Japan and was even labeled with both names. Although the island of women wasn't real, it was real enough for men to spill their tea on. And that's what matters. For more Japanese videos, check these out. We have two new emperors on Patreon this week, Yoko Tenko.
and Yuki. You guys are amazing. We also have regular patrons, Quinn Landis and Kubo. Thanks so much. All right, I love you and spread the knowledge.